Hi everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain Free and Fit. Today in our ongoing series of self-care for cervical degenerative herniated bulging discs, we're gonna be going over a few muscle relaxation techniques to help instantly reduce muscular pain and disc-related pain in your neck. Hope you enjoy. So just because you've been diagnosed with a herniated disc, degenerative disc, or bulging disc, doesn't necessarily mean that the disc itself is causing the pain. Many times pain is caused by the associated facet joints at that level or above and below. Those are the joints in the back of the spine that become hypomobile or tight, or perhaps the instability due to a degenerative disc where there's excess motion on the ligaments and other soft tissues is pulling and causing pain, or the muscles are pulling. Muscles pull because of abnormal posture, tension, abnormal movements, and trigger points develop in muscles, which are tight spots that trap toxins and irritate nerves, or muscles undergo tightness, and muscles can generate their own pain, as well as pull on the spine and thus provide an irritating force on disc fibers. So today we're gonna to be talking about the three main muscle groups that we're gonna address in the neck that can affect discs, which are the trapezius muscles, the SCM muscles, and the scalene muscles. We're going to talk about how to analyze each one for tension and what you can do to release that tension and decrease the pressure on your neck. So let's delve into those three muscles and learn about them. Let's begin with the back of the neck, the trapezius muscle, which runs from the back of the skull down towards our spine, out to our shoulder, and down to the bottom of our mid-back. Many times the trapezius is tight because we're tensing shoulders up, or we have forward head posture or extended head posture where the head has a tendency while we're working to move forward and extend at the base of the skull as opposed to extending at the bottom of the neck. You can check the trapezius by simply feeling off to the side of your spine or in this area between your shoulder and your neck and monitor the tension in that muscle as you tilt your head upwards or shrug your shoulders up. Now it's important that you don't need to actually move your shoulders up or your head but tense them tensing head upwards and tensing shoulders up, you'll notice a tension running through your trapezius muscles. That can be felt again at the initial site between shoulder and neck, or just off to the side of the middle of your neck. If you feel this tension, and then as you exhale, release this tension, you may notice a difference in how your neck pain feels. Remember, these muscles pull on the vertebra. They connect to the vertebra, the discs, they contribute to compression, shearing forces, and many times irritate chronic disc pain. The next muscle to check is your SCM muscle, which runs from the back of the skull across the side of the neck and attaches to your collarbone, your inner collarbone. This muscle many times is shortened or is tense because we have a forward head posture, dropped head posture. We store emotional tension in this muscle. So to release it or to notice if it's bothering you, simply feel the back of your neck and you'll see this strap muscle that comes along. Keep your fingers on that. And again, not moving, but tensing your head forward and down, you'll feel that muscle bulge or tense. Again, if you exhale and realize a difference in tension or it makes your neck pain feel better, this is a muscle that you need to target. Similarly, we're gonna check the scalene muscles, which are on the side of the neck and they move down to attach to the first rib behind your collarbone. Here, you'll feel behind your collarbone in the sulcus behind it, between your shoulder blade and collarbone. And if you inhale and tense your shoulders up, you'll notice tension in this area. If that starts to create any of your symptoms of your neck pain, or perhaps even extremity pain, tingling, numbness down your hand, you know you have a problem with scalene tightness. To release it, after the tension is applied, we're simply gonna exhale and relax the tension of the shoulder blade. And you'll notice that that muscle releases. So to practically use this information with either of these three muscles, the trapezius, the SCM, or the scalenes, let's first practice monitoring the tension through the day. Initially, you can do this using your hand or fingers on the muscle, and throughout the day, check to see if you're monitoring tension in the muscle, or if you're monitoring a relaxed state of the muscle. It's simple to do by simply tensing for the trapezius, your head upwards, or shrugging your shoulders up. With that tension, you will feel extra tension of the muscle and then upon exhalation drop the head and shoulders back into their resting neutral position and if you notice a difference compared to when you first felt the muscle you are harboring tension in that muscle so therefore through the day initially with your hand you can tense and relax and after you get good at this and practice it for a while you can simply tense 
without the hand and then relax. Now it's important to tense first at the beginning because just trying to relax the muscle, it won't happen as easily as if you tense it first because if we tense the muscle first, we have it in our control and therefore it's much easier to shut it off and do the opposite, which is to relax it. After a while, you can do this without actually feeling the muscle by simply exhaling and dropping the shoulder and allowing the skull to come back into a neutral position. Many times when you're working, when you're looking forward, when you're studying computers, your head will be held in a state of extension. So by relaxing and letting the skull rock back into a neutral position with that extension and dropping your shoulder, that muscle will relax. And you'll get better and better at doing this. Look at your daily activities, your postures. You may even be interacting with people and getting stress in conversations. After a while, you'll be able to just shut this off as you exhale and you'll notice a difference. For the SCM muscle, same thing, except here you want to tense the head downwards as if you're trying to drop the chin towards the floor. As you do that with tension, you'll notice the SCM tenses. If you notice that bothers your symptoms, you're going to then relax that chin, let it go back up, relax the tension, and you'll feel a difference in your symptoms. With practice, you'll be able to do this without feeling the muscle, just simply tensing a little bit and relaxing. You notice a difference in the way you feel, you are holding tension. You need to practice that more during the day, shutting it off, exhaling and relaxing. With more practice, you won't even have to tense at first, you'll just be able to focus on the shut off. And you'll feel that over time, the pull on your neck, the pull on your cervical discs, herniated discs, disc bulging pains will improve when you know which muscles to target. Similarly, the scalene muscles, which run from the side of the neck into that first rib behind your collarbone, often tighten when we're using a non-functional way of breathing, where we're not using our diaphragm at the bottom of our rib cage, but we're using this, what's called accessory muscle of inhalation, the scalenes. We get under tension, we inhale, and we feel that tension coming up. So one of the things we need to do with this is not only learn to shut the scalenes off by exhaling and dropping the shoulder girdle, shoulder blade down, feeling the relaxation there, but we need to learn how to start using our diaphragm to breathe. And one of the techniques we can use to help this is applying one hand to our chest and one hand to our upper abdomen above our belly button, and as you inhale, focus on relaxing shoulders down and inhaling into your stomach, allowing your belly to fill with air. That'll be the diaphragm pushing down into your abdominal cavity, allowing your stomach to move out. But try not to allow the chest to move. If the chest starts to move upwards, that's gonna use the scaling muscles and that's what's promoting tension in there. So practicing diaphragmatic breathing, where as you inhale, and exhale, you feel all the motion happening in your upper abdomen. The lower rib cage on the side also expands in and out, but there's no chest movement moving up and down. And this sometimes takes a little practice to get down, but when you do, you'll notice that that scaling muscle tension will have a lot less tendency to tighten and you'll be feeling better on your disc pain. So plugging these techniques in to monitor throughout the day, trapezius tension, SCM tension, and scaling tension, will help you overcome excess muscle tension. Now it's important that you get good at this. It's not something you just wanna practice two or three times a day. You wanna practice this very frequently, perhaps every five, 10, 15 minutes, so you can catch where you're tensing muscles through the day, especially what activities, and you can then focus on relaxing those muscles and bringing them to the state of peace as you go along. Now, the more we understand about pain and how the nerves become sensitized centrally in our central nervous system, meaning that the more times we experience pain, the easier it is to feel pain, the more we want to take advantage of these other co-factors that contribute to pain. If you have past experiences that you're always thinking about that are traumatic, if you believe negatively that your pain is never going to get better, if you're a person who's under stress and anxiety all the time, these are all factors that are contributing to how sensitized that central nervous system is and how easy it is for you to feel pain and reflexively, the body is gonna tighten. The muscles wanna tighten in response to any type of stress or perceived threat to themselves. So it's important to couple these psychological thoughts that you're having and with a state of relaxation while you're doing this exercise. You can physically relax the muscle, but if you instantly go back to thinking about stressful things, if you're a geared up type A person, those muscles are gonna tie themselves right back up in tension as a protective mechanism. So it's important to you practice this to put yourself in a peaceful state and try to remain that way. 
One of the techniques that works well is to picture yourself in a serene setting. It may be a beach, a mountainside, a lake, in your own backyard, wherever it is. There are no problems. Nobody's asking you to do anything. And you're going to put yourself in that state, that same relaxed state, as you're exhaling and as you're focusing on relaxing these exercises. You can take it to a different level, a spiritual level. If, like myself, you're a Christian and have a deep faith in the Lord and His promises for relaxation and healing, you can focus on those scriptural verses where he tells you that you should not be stressed, that he's got it, trust in him, and have faith that he, for his will is to heal you. Whichever technique you use, it's important to use it as a unit. You want to use the physical, the mental, and the spiritual together to relax muscles. Many people get really good at the physical, but they forget the driving forces behind why these muscles are getting tight. So looking at your disc pain, your muscle tension as a complete unit, psychological, spiritual, what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are, have a lot to do, what your postures are, your movements, your repetitive daily activities. They have a lot to do also with why these muscles tighten. So when you start to understand what your problem is from a complete complex, it's gonna be a lot easier to address the issues that are contributing to it. If you've enjoyed this video on net disc pain and muscle tensions, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. Questions or comments, write in as always to do my best to answer. And remember, if you're looking for a great program to figure out what your biomechanics are, what your muscle imbalances are, what your posture and movement issues are that are contributing to your neck pain, including disc problems, check out our neck healing exercise program available at painfreeandfit.com. It has a self-guided, self-help way of tailoring an exercise program to help you get over pain, get active again without irritating yourself, and assist your body's healing process. And as always, I'm available for online consultations through Zoom if you have questions about how to analyze yourself and how to build a routine to help conquer your neck disc pain.